Hello everyone. So I upgraded my ZBook 17 G1 graphics card. It was a K3100M and I made it a K5100M. Never done this before and I just want to share a few pointers and actually the one issue I had which I first thought the card was either broken or something. Essentially my laptop was just rebooting in circles after I completed this. Now, I will include a couple of diagrams kind of showing pictures and things like that to, for a more detailed view at the end of the video, but I just want to briefly go over how to do this. It's actually really, really easy. There's not too much to it at all. So you want to remove the hard drives. Mine has a caddy with another hard drive in here, so that just slides out. But if you have a DD drive, you want to undo this little screw here, which holds it in. And there are three screws. Once you slide the DVD drive out, four under the battery. And then essentially you want to do undo every screw around the laptop except for the couple of screws right in here. If you're wondering what length the screws are, they're actually labeled. So even if you forget, they're pretty much all the same length. I think there's two, two that uh, go in here that are slightly longer. Um, so yeah, we well, want to start out by removing the keyboard. There are two screws for the keyboard, but instead of just undoing these two, I recommend just removing all of them in one go so you don't have to flip the laptop around back and forth. At this point, you open the keyboard, remove the keyboard and to remove the keyboard it's, it's a little pain in the neck but essentially you want to get under it and prop it up and uh, there are clips along the top that you kind of don't want to break and the bottom just kind of shimmies in so you want to essentially create a curve like this pulling it up from the center so it pops out you don't want to pull it from the top it's better to pull more from the bottom once this comes out you undo all the ribbon cables you see on both sides, so just make sure you remove every ribbon cable just so you don't accidentally rip anything out. If you're not aware of how to remove the ribbon cables, basically the cable goes into a little slot, and there, into the slot, and then to remove it, you need to lift up a little piece of plastic which frees the cable from removing or putting it back in, and then you tap, slide the sides of the plug essentially in. You want to do this very, very carefully as they're very tiny little plastic pieces, and you you just you don't want to break them obviously because then you won't be able to get the ribbon cable in but um you're going to need something kind of like a pair of tweezers or something very small to lightly lift them up just be careful when you do that so at this point once you got the keyboard out i think there may i don't believe there are any screws but if you see a screw or two under the keyboard you may need to remove that but i'm pretty certain there are not Essentially, to remove the top, it's, it's, it's really easy. I started, I think, one of these two top edges, and I pulled it from the back. So the front didn't want to come apart as easily. So I lifted it up, kind of wiggled it, and the top came right up. It was, it was super easy. I just want to say this whole process was very, very simple. Now, once you remove the whole, the whole bottom, we'll be able to see the GPU and everything else. And I do want to note, there is one screw that kind of, a little hard to explain, but Where's that uh, the fan? So this screw here, it actually attaches to the entire fan and GPU assembly. So when you get it in, make sure it's in good because it pulls in the entire assembly here. So it's the only one that kind of attaches to the GPU and CPU, the whole kind of beat chunk of it. Now the GPU and the CPU, the heatsink is attached by eight screws, so four for each one. You undo those. At this point, I just want to stress that you, you really want to clean the computer well. So just literally just clean everything. You use uh, some rubbing alcohol, wipe down the processors on both of them, remove all the thermal paste. Also, when you're pulling out the heat sink, when you, when you get all those heat sink screws, it's kind of uh, a little tricky, but you want to just lightly lift it and pro also push it from the bottom and slide the entire heat sink assembly up. So it's, uh, I don't know, it required a little bit of shaking to get it out first, but it came back in really easily. You'll see it kind of comes in at an angle. It's uh, nothing difficult, just obviously you want to take care as a, it is the internal parts of your computer. So you want to clean everything out. The GPU itself is just held in by two very obvious screws that are on the side of it. You slide, take those off, lift up the card just like you do with any RAM or anything like that, and put the new card in. You want to put in thermal paste the way I recommend putting in the thermal paste is you put some a little bit of a very small amount of thermal paste on the GPU and the CPU and then you use a rubber glove and very lightly spread it. The whole thing is you want essentially the smallest possible layer of the thermal paste because all it needs to do is fill the gap 
between the heatsink and the processor or graphics card. You don't want to slobber it on. You want to, it literally just, it needs to cover it and that is it. You don't want more than that. That's why spreading it with a finger is pretty easy. You just evenly get it over the processors and you're good to go. And putting it back in and everything is easy. You essentially do the reverse. Now this is where I kind of ran into the issue. So once I put everything back together, my laptop would just reboot over and over and over. It was just on off, on off, on off. I wasn't really sure what to do. So I started taking it apart again. I dis disabled the keyboard thinking maybe there's something, I don't know, maybe I was cleaning something. So essentially after fumbling around, there are four RAM slots in this computer, two here and there are two below the keyboard. So when I took off the top of the laptop again, or the, the keyboard, I decided before I'm gonna unscrew this GPU that I put in and deal with all the thermal paste and everything I just did, I'm gonna remove the two RAM slots that were at the on the inside of the laptop that you don't see. I removed them, plugged in the laptop, powered on with no issue. It was, it was honestly kind of amazing. So uh, I, I spent almost an hour fumbling around trying to figure out what is going on, why is my computer not booting? Is this graphics card I bought on eBay really bad? It worked perfectly fine. So I turned it off again, I put the RAM in. I also took out this RAM and put it back in again. And everything worked, again, with the 32 gigs of RAM. There were no issues of any kind. The laptop's now been running for two days perfectly. Uh, this was definitely a 100% worthy upgrade, and I really don't think you need any expertise to do this. You just need to be careful. You need to unscrew the screws. This computer, it's a workstation that comes apart with absolute ease. And it's totally recommended. You can make a laptop like this. Uh, for example, it, the K51000M doubles essentially all frame rates versus the K31000. So if you're deciding to keep an old laptop, it makes total sense. Now, as I said, at the end of the video, I will include a couple of diagrams kind of showing a little more of what I did. But this was incredibly easy. I know there are other graphics cards you can use that the computers aren't supposed to come with. I've never tried that. But if you're putting in a GPU that is offered with the computer series that you're upgrading, it's almost a no-brainer. Just check it out, look on eBay, see if you can get it. it it's, it's very easy. So yeah, essentially, uh, those are my two cents. Um, the only other thing I would say is before I'm, just make sure you clean the computer every single part. So when you take this plastic off, wipe every part of it down. Now, obviously not the main boards, but every piece of plastic everywhere. Because, for example, this laptop was six years old. It's been on pretty much 24-7 for six years. There was crud everywhere. It, I think I spent an hour and a half cleaning the whole thing. Um, one other thing is do not use Lysol wipes to clean a computer, which I used. I mean, it's not really that big of an issue, but it leaves these tiny little cloth marks when it dries out so you gotta use the compressed air to or tissue or something to lightly get the flakes off but it does leave these little flakes on everything uh, so I recommend just using kind of a tissue and a rubbing alcohol so yeah those are my two cents I uh, hope this helps and if anyone is ever wondering if upgrading a laptop works or graphics card is worth it it is completely worth it it's like I said it's it's doubled all frame rates it also, repasting and redoing everything has lowered my temperatures by 20, 20 degrees across the board. So now my computer's running at like 65 degrees Celsius versus 85 most of the time, or like 80. Um, so yeah, even just from the perspective of cleaning everything out and repasting it is worth it. And don't be afraid to remove the heatsink. Don't be afraid to repaste it. It's, it's not hard at all. It's, it's a little scary, just, but it's super easy. So I hope this helps.